All right, so I picked up an MPC Live 2. I, I wanted something that was uh, portable, um, relatively portable, so I could, you know, kind of get out of this space. Um, a lot of distraction down here sometimes if you just want to kind of mess around on stuff. But anyway, I wanted to try to set this up um, to work with the Oxy. Somebody on Discord had asked how you set that up. And um, there's a a few um, <clears throat> a few things to pay attention to on both devices, and I thought I could maybe run through it fairly quick. Um, so the first thing that maybe I'll point out is uh, my template here. So I've got my uh, mix view. I kind of like this view because I can see everything, right? And so first thing I did on MPC is I've got eight plugins. Uh, which sort of correspond to eight tracks with the Oxy. And this is a multi-track sequencer on one. Two is a matricial, three is a chord, and four is another multi, uh, because I like to use the grids engine for some drums. So what I um, ended up doing was I just set up a template with eight uh, plugins, eight audio tracks, and four MIDI tracks. Um, but I actually haven't used those too much. And then of course it comes, I believe, by default with these eight submixes and some returns. Um, and I got my, my effects set up. And then on my main out, I've got just a channel strip. So again, I'm, I'm pretty new to the MPC workflow, um, but this kind of made sense to me to have some stuff ready to roll. And I thought that I would um, walk through that with you. So first thing is you get your, your template ready or load your sets up. Second thing is from this mix view, um, you've got your IO tab, which is at the bottom here. And you can see each one of my tracks. I've got two drum tracks, um, sub factory, tube synth, Jura on five, analog dreams on six, Nact on seven and Sway on eight. You can see I've got um, all of them set at merge. And what merge will do is volume wise, you can see the kit is working. If I'm on one, go to preview, I'm on track one. This is enabled, so the keyboard. You can see merge is merging what I've got on the uh, MIDI and it's, um, also merging with the pads. If you take that merge off and you just did say in, you might lose one or the other. In this case, I'm keeping them. All right, so that's my merge setting. I've got my channels set up. So my kit is uh, one channel with, that's over here. You can see two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight drums. Although there's 16 pads, of course you can keep going. But the Oxy just has the eight tracks. So we work off that to start. Each multi-track is set to the same MIDI channel. So that's one, 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 one. And that just is because that happens to be um, the uh, first track's MIDI channel of one. So if I want to do the second track, I would change that channel over to two, and that happens to be up here. Um, take off the scale here. <clears throat> Preview. Track two is enabled. And you can see uh, right now we are on second channel, okay? So try to keep this ordered. Track three is on channel three, channel four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I got eight channels basically. These correspond to my one sequencer, my multi, and each row is on one channel. So if I wanted to just kind of show you, um, keep it in drum view, or I can enable keyboard view. And uh, we'll just show on the volumes. One, track two, track three, Track four, track five, track six, 
track seven, track eight. So that's matching the uh, MIDI channels, and that's here in the I.O. menu. Uh, I believe you can also get there from double tapping into the track settings, set your same ports here. This is just a different view for the same information. Um, but I tend to just touch it and use the jog wheel. Um, all right, so in your actual preferences, there may be something you need to set up here. And so MIDI, um, you can see I've got the Oxy-1 is connected by USB cable up here. And that one is coming up here to uh, control tracks. And then you can see MPC pads I've got as global. And I believe I found that to be the setting uh, when I did not want the pads when I only wanted the pads to work on the currently selected track. So that was helpful. Then um, scroll down a little. You'll see I'm not sending any clock out. I just uh, am using <clears throat> Oxy to send clock to the MPC. And so I've got the receive MIDI clock here. And if I'm not using the Oxy and I use some other sequencer, I I tend not to use uh, internal clock from like machine or MPC. Um, so we're not sending any sync because that could create some loops and then I don't have anything changed up here. Um, I did try on Bluetooth with the Oxy and it does receive notes okay, it seems, but um, clock is not something that I would recommend, you know, if you're just gonna send notes like chords and, and things, and you're not gonna try to sync the two devices, I think Bluetooth is fine. Um, but it's, you know, it's not so hard to connect a cable and cables are always a little better. So that should be kind of the preferences. Um, in the Oxy, what you can see is shift sequencer. Initially, you're gonna see your uh, main channel setup, so that's one. But if I hold the sequencer and press each track, I'm now in track menu and you can see I've got channel <clears throat> one on the first track with the offset of C3. And that, um, let's turn on preview. I don't think we'll trigger a note. Yeah, so what I'll probably do is change that right now and we'll go down to C1. And the reason I'm going to C1 is that is actually the start of the uh, of the kit on uh, MIDI channel one. And you could see that that was sending notes as I turned that knob. Okay, so you can actually tell what's going on here. Go here to volume. So one way for you to figure out where your root note or your base note is for your kit is to just kind of scroll the, the knob. Anyway, so that's C1. And now technically if I wanted to, um, let me mute these other ones. I could press start here and get out of settings and I could place some notes there if I wanted to. Shift the end to 16 and I'm muted. That's why you don't hear it. So let me unmute. If I wanted to uh, kind of change that, I could go into piano roll and just on this one multi-track, if I just hit octave, I'm now in piano roll. You can see that we're still on C1, but now I've got eight drums. I really could, because it's mono. I don't know why I'm at 177 BPM, but for some reason I'm there. Just turn that down. So we'll go back into piano roll. We'll just do something super basic. Another thing I like to do is just kind of randomly generate stuff. And so you can see density here. Actually, what we'll do is clear it, put my range up to 
Uh, I guess I could go 16. And what I just did there with the 16 range is I just created a little pattern across um, 16 semitones, and that's actually hitting our uh, various tracks here. And if I want to do that again, go back to random, and I'm just generating on the one track. If I want to confine that just to say like kick, snare, hat, turn up density. And if I don't want to do that, what I could also do is um, mute this guy and I'm here and this multi-track is actually all channel one. So the whole thing is just for the kit and then I could use the grids engine. You can see the blue is enabled, so grids engine. And then right here, just press play again. And now if I want to change the grids engine, um, you can see right here, kick snare hat. Patterns. That's basically it. Um, so the intention here wasn't to make any kind of track, but just to tell you that you can uh, easily set up, you know, 8, 16, whatever your uh, MPC memory will, will allow uh, various tracks and trigger them. And so do that, you know, through a combination of main settings, I.O. here <clears throat> on the uh, main track view, and then also, of course, in your Oxy settings.